Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Naked Pastor, the show that's all about you, your questions about God, faith, religion, and the Bible. It's been a while. I had the virus, like most people probably, and went on a bit of holiday, and then we had the new year. Landing on our feet now the first Thursday of the month. We are going to continue on every first Thursday of the month having this show called The Naked Pastor. This is a dial-in show if you're listening on any one of the apps. It is on Thursday evenings, Central Africa time, 8 p.m. And you can dial in, ask your questions, whatever, if you have questions. Topic related, it'll be cool if you can do that. If not, we'll find some answers to your questions and you are more than welcome to dial in, type your questions. And once again, just thanks to our sponsors. It's AV Audiovisual, hashtag Audiovisual. You, you can search them at hashtag.coza.co.za, our sponsors for this show. So without any further ado, let's jump into the topic money so if we look at everything that's going on regarding the church and pastors and the money and we get mega church pastors that earn mega bucks and you know is that right is that wrong um spending a huge amount of monies on personal and we had the million rand uh, the currency in south africa is rand so the million rand pastor that ran up a bowl a alcohol bill, nonetheless, of a million rand. My word. Um, that was that was quite a shocker to me. So what does the Bible say about money? Where does your responsibility as a believer end? How do we, what's the church's responsibility of money? How does this reflect? So the first of all, money is neutral. I'm going to say that again. Money is neutral. Money is not evil. Or money is not good. Money is neutral. However, money is a magnifying glass. It will magnify what is in your heart. It will magnify the intents of who you are, what you're doing, what you're about. What, it, it will magnify that. So money is a magnifying. The heart can be evil. Good evening, Burgess. Nice having you on board. You Remember, this is a calling show, so you've got any questions. This is about God, faith religion and the Bible. We're talking about money. So money is neutral. The love of money is the root of all evil, not money. There's a big difference, the love of money. So looking at all these guys with their money, mega churches, the million rand pastor running up a bill, guys going absolutely bonkers. What does the Bible say about money? Where does your, you and my, our responsibility end regarding money so first of all we have to understand that all the riches belong to the lord the bible says that the earth and all its riches belong to god god owns everything so if somebody is making millions and millions uh it remains god's so we only become steward you and i as children of god become stewards of god's kingdom god's money god's resources so, and we are children of God by two ways. One, by his creation. And two, I like the way Charles Spurgeon writes it, is by being adopted or born again. So born again, he's, Jesus explained to Nicodemus, unless you are born again, Nicodemus must I enter back into my mother's womb. No, sir, born again is something by the, done by the Spirit. 1 John 12 says, if you then. Receive him. Somebody's knocking at the door. You open the door. You welcome them into your life. You have received them into your life. If you then receive Jesus as Lord into your life, well, all we can do is receive. We're not saved by our works. We're not saved about going to church or doing whatever. We are saved purely by opening the door and receiving him. That's about the only thing you and I can brag about i opened the door and all of us can do that so it's like not really something to be bragging about it's just somebody knocked i opened the door hello i received him he does the rest so being born again so we're children of god by two ways one is by being created and two by being born 
again, to become children of God. Then as those ambassadors, we are ambassadors of His resources. What about tithing? Is that is that Old Testament, New Testament? The first thing I want to say about it, Matthew 24, 24, Jesus says you've got, you have tithed of certain things, but you've neglected the good part, and that is to look after the poor. And, 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 and so tithing and good works go together. And it's not an Old Testamentical thing. It's a New Testamentical thing. Um, before there was a law, there was tithing. If you think back to the story of Cain and Abel, you will see there, that's before Moses, before the law, and Cain and Abel tithe. The one gave a good one, and the other one gave the, well, not such good tithing. And um, the rest is history. We all know what happened there. If you don't, go read in Genesis the story of the two brothers, Cain and Abel. It will do you good to see that. Hi, Paul. Welcome to tonight. Okay, so what about money? Where do we go from here with money? So it's very, very easy. You Do we tithe? Yes. What is a tithe? One tenth. Do you tithe before tax, after tax, before deduction, after deduction? Well, that's kind of personal. You know, you go speak to the Lord. You go, you know, figure it out uh, regarding that. But if I can, and I'll say it like this, when tithing originated, you would have a, let's say, Cain, um, now, rather take Abel. It's easier. Abel was a farmer of sheep, and his sheep had car, a little lambs. So let's say he had ten lambs. He took one lamb and he took it to the Lord. So that's tithing. Um, you go interpret that in modern day context of where the money, you know, what's it before, after taxes, before deductions, after deductions. It's it more a sign of dependence. Yeah. And which in our ca- culture is kind of counter countercultural counter because we are taught from a small age in the, in the community and society we live in, you need to be independent, self-reliant, self-sufficient, um, self-vindicating, self-justifiable. Self-justif- you have to be able to state your case and man yourself. Yeah, all those things. So in that context, maybe it's about a little bit upstream, countercultural to be dependent. So when we tithe, it's a sign of our dependency, saying, Lord, I need you to supply. Father, I need you to do something for me. So we might not like that because we think, well, I worked hard for that. That's why it becomes a sacrifice. That is it's because it's time away from family it's time away from what you would like to do it's it's maybe doing or working for somebody that you don't necessarily like and you have to tolerate them and um take whatever they're dishing out and that might not be pleasant at all therefore and then we earn we've traded our time for money and then we say lord but i actually need you i'm i'm dependent on you that's the one thing the other thing is also it's, it's an avenue. The Bible states it very, very clearly. It's an avenue of opening blessings to come into your life. So we all, most of us in our Western society and our thinking, we, we look at blessings such as more money, bigger contracts, a, a raise, all of those things. But blessings also come in the form of health, good relationships, um, we live in a crime rhythm country where blessing could be protection, that your family is safe, your wife is safe, that you are safe, your car doesn't get stolen, um, you're not in an armed robbery, or if you are, you're actually living through it and come off with minimal pain or bodily harm or even emotional harm. And I can't think, I can't help but think of a lady in South Africa whose husband is a famous, well, he's a, he's a gospel singer. And they broke into their house one night and they raped the lady. And while she was being raped, the Lord covered her and said, they are not touching you. They might be touching your body, but they are not touching you. And she could actually, in that space, in that time, she could take no offense. She didn't, wasn't feeling violated. Her emotions didn't go haywire. Afterwards, obviously, she had to go for ARV treatment and that type of thing. And um, does very well. Actually stays in the States um, as we speak. So 
tithing opens doors to blessings. Um, and like I said, you know, we can define blessing in various ways, but it's not necessarily just financial. I don't think that it is scriptural to say, give me $100 and expect a miracle. I don't think that is biblical. I don't find that in the scripture. Um, I don't have the faith for that. But what I do have the faith for is to believe what the Bible says. And the Bible says this in Malachi. If you would, if you would take me on on my word and tithe and not rob me, look, see, if I will not open the gates of heaven and pour out such blessing that you cannot contain. And, and there's a beauty here, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So, in the biblical times, the devourer was, it, it was locusts. It was anything that would eat a crop or a harvest or would cause um, death to flocks. It was anything that would actually cause your hard labor, your hard work to be diminished. God would stop. He made that promise. He would stop. So if you think of that, when you're tithing in modern day context, I would say the fridge will last longer. You know, you... Um, because you're diligent and, and you are looking after your stuff because you're a good steward, your car will last longer, your drive better, so your tires would last longer, and God would in such way provide and protect and the miracle will be upon that, and you will not be in want or need. And yes, the thing is very important that God promises in the Bible, He promises that uh, He will supply our want. Uh, and David writes Psalm 23, I shall not want. So God will supply our want. He will supply our need, Philippians 4, 19. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, he will fulfill your need. However, God will not provide for your greed. So when we say that, I think it's, it's not scriptural. You can't out God. I don't think that is the right way to go about it. I just think that is arrogant. I think it's arrogant because the whole thing around finances is a dependency. It's built trusting God and believing in God that He will provide where no man can provide and that you can sow and harvest. He says as long as the earth remains, harvest time and sea time will remain and you can put your faith towards that. Faith is easy. It's believing what God says. You can, the Word of God says faith comes by the hearing of the Word of God. So you can't have faith about something if you haven't had a word, so that if you haven't read the Bible, and there wasn't a quickening of the Scripture in your spirit, you can't have faith, basically. And that's to understand that believing in God and believing God is two different things. Believing in God is saying there is a God somewhere up in heaven, maybe living in your heart that died on a cross. Or believing God is that God said, He said, he will provide. He said he'll open doors. He said he'll go before you. He said that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He said that you will harvest or reap 30, 60, 100 fold. Isaac in Genesis sowed in a famine after the previous famine. And that year he reaped 160 and 100 fold. He reaped 100 fold. And the Bible says he became very wealthy. He became very wealthy. So wealth is not the opposite of holiness. Wealth is not the opposite of um, seeking God. But money will magnify what's in your heart. The question I want to leave you with tonight is, if money was not an issue, if I would say to you, yeah, is a hundred million US dollars, what would you do? What is your plan? Yes, I understand. You want to pay off your house. You want to pay off your car. By the way, the Word of God says, oh, no man, anything, don't go into debt. If you go into debt, please pay it off in seven years. So you have to do quickly and get out of that. Because if when you are in debt, you're enslaved to that person or that institution. You work and it takes your money, works, it takes your money, and COVID comes along, you can't pay your bills, and they take your car, and they take your house, and a lot of people lost a lot of things like that. And there is a process of coming over from one kingdom to the other kingdom where one's not moved instantaneously from one kingdom to the other kingdom it takes a bit of time to get back to my point uh before i digress too much is if i tell told you you got a hundred million dollars 
what is your plan? And he said, yeah, you want to pay off your car, maybe buy a second car, buy, buy a house, pay off your house, buy another house, pay that off, put some money one side for your child's tuition, put some money in a retirement fund, and you still have, you know, 90 million US dollars. What is your plan? You see, sometimes our lack of plan, our lack of vision, our lack of dream actually keep us from because God is not, doesn't want to waste resources. God is he's wasteful with his love, but he does not want to waste resources. He wants us to be good stewards. He doesn't want to set, up, set us up for failure. And having a plan in your mind, that's just the dream. What's on paper? What have you done the research for? Your market research, your mission, your mandate. Who is your master? Um, and what is the method? Where are you going? Those five M's. Where are you going with it regarding that? What is your dream? What will you do if I give you 100 million US? That's the question we're asking tonight. Money. What does the Bible say about money? What does God say about the Bible? This is, and I'm going to repeat that, that money is not evil. Money is neutral. It is the heart, man's heart, that determines whether or not we're going to apply that money for good or evil. I can take the same 100 Rand or $100 and I can buy a meal and give it to somebody or I can use that and bribe somebody. Now I can buy drugs with that and that 100 Rand goes to that drug dealer and that drug dealer buys a gun and that guy shoots somebody. And my intent behind it has actually made money evil. Money in itself is not evil. It is, the Bible says it clearly, it's the love of money. There's the love, what you, what you love it more. You can only love, you know, you can't love more than one God or more have more than, it, the Bible says you only have one master. You can't have two masters. You love the one and hate the other. So if money is your master, you will hate God. You, you, you'll act in such a way that you strive for money or step on whoever, you'll do whatever to get more money. And we need money. And this is what, this is the beauty about God is not anti-money. He just wants us to place money in its place. Why am I talking about money? Well, in South Africa, it is the, the end of our fiscal year in the February, and we are doing this show, The Naked Pastor, the first Thursday of every month. So for February, we're talking about money. What about money? And what does God say about money? So there's starting, there's offerings, there's something that you give out of free will because you appreciate this. Um, alms that you give to people, because you feel sorry for them. So the beggar on the street, and there's nothing wrong giving to the guy on the beggar street. I know that our American friends have got a lot of um, war veterans that are homeless and that type of thing. And those guys need need us because they, you know, they they walk around with a lot of, you know, uh, hurt in the inside. However, you do have your drug addicts that just out of rebellion on drug addict on the street begging for money, taking that money for their next fix. Uh, Proverbs gives us a bit of balance. Give to him who is worthy. So in one of our cities in South Africa, they actually advertise, please don't pay the people to beg. Please don't, those people standing on the corner, don't have a legit cause to be there. Don't give them money. Well, I'll take your money to the shelter because you want to give it because you feel sorry for people. And God says, he who gives out of that, he'll, he'll pay every cent back. He who lends to the poor, lends to God. So what about money? Is Are we going to worship money or are we going to put money in its place? And the only way to do that is to see how big God is and that everything belongs to Him and we have become His stewards. I want to challenge you that to take the Word of God serious and believe God, believe what He says, not just believe in Him. And um, He says, if you... It's a challenge. If you take me up on this, if you test me in this, see if I will not open. And that's the little bit of faith. That's the little bit of faith that we need is to say, Lord, you said that I am going to do it. Unfortunately, God is not bound to our microwave society, our instant society. God he looks into our hearts. He tests our faith. He looks at the purity. If we would say, so that means you test him over a long period of time. Take a tithe. Go give it to the Lord. How are you going to give it to the Lord? Well, 
take it to the treasure house. Go take it to the place where you get scripture, where to the church where you're involved in or that you call your home church. Go there and actually do it and say, Lord, with faith, I'm not just giving this because, you know, it's part of the service, it's part of the routine. The guy's talking something nice up there and saying something nice, and here comes the little basket, and I'm putting some money in it. But rather say, Lord, your word says, your word says, I choose to believe you. Therefore, I place this money into your kingdom. And I trust that you will do the best with that. If you see over a period of time that the person that is receiving that money is not managing or having a good steward over it, then that will tell you to move. But if they are being a good steward over it and they're not spending a million rand on a pub bill or a dinner bill, then you can know, you know what, this guy is also of the same ilk that he has to be a good steward. And you see, and you trust the Lord. Say, Lord, I trust you. You say you're going to open doors for me. You're going to provide for me. You're going to pour out blessings on me. Lord, I, and those blessings, like I said, they're not just only equated to financial breakthrough, even though a lot of people need financial breakthrough. It doesn't exclude it, but it doesn't stop with it. There is more to the word bless, blessings or being blessed. There's it's a huge thing. So, that said, this is the naked pastor, and this is the naked truth. The tithing is has been there before there was a law. It is not confined to the Old Testament. It's inclusive of the New Testament, but it must be salted with faith and not religion. This is the Naked Pastor. Keep well. God bless. Hope to see you next th- month, the first Thursday, 8 p.m. South African time. God bless.